Perhaps nothing else in the past couple of years has been as discussed, anticipated, or invested in as vaccines. Because of COVID-19, disease and health have been on everyone's minds, particularly shots. Modern medicine has given us many such wonders. Vaccines have saved us from diseases, surgeries have pieced bodies back together, and nutrition has extended our lifespan. There is still much debate, though, in the news, on social media, and from your friends, family, and co-workers surrounding these medical technologies, especially vaccines, autism, and microchips ring a bell, but science and history hold fast in one conclusion. Vaccines have changed history and the human experience. We, as babies, receive a round of shots to immunize us against once common diseases. Every flu season sees another needle in your arm. Want to travel? Well, here's a list of vaccines you should get. Annoying though they might be, vaccines are a simple way to protect against much worse than annoying diseases. To say vaccines are influential would be stating the obvious at absolute best and expressing a gross understatement at worst. So roll up your sleeves and get ready for a slight pinch of knowledge. Today, we're discussing the influential invention of vaccines. Inoculations date back as far as 200 BCE, according to some sources, though in a very rudimentary form compared to today. Up until the 1600s, people in India and China protected against smallpox by grinding up scabs from infected people and blowing the powder up the nose. In one account, Emperor Kang Hees, who survived smallpox when he was younger, had his children inoculated this way. Other methods involved rubbing the powder into cuts in the skin. These early methods became known as variolation. Though not the most sanitary, Variolation came about after people observed that those exposed to smallpox previously did not become reinfected when exposed a second time. Surprisingly, the smallpox nose powder proved to be effective enough to be used up through the time of the Ming Dynasty in China. Elsewhere, Buddhist monks used the same principle to inoculate themselves against snake bites by drinking snake venom. Edward Jenner, known as the father of vaccines in the West, develops a different version of the smallpox inoculation. He used samples of cowpox instead of smallpox. Cowpox, a viral disease that affected the udders of cows, is transmissible from animals to humans. Since it does not affect humans as severely as smallpox, cowpox has helped people develop immunity to smallpox. The development of the smallpox vaccine was seen as a monumental development in science. Countless smallpox plagues had ravaged populations around the world for centuries, from the American colonies killing settlers and devastating indigenous populations, to dynasties in India and China. In an interesting and macabre historical tale, just a couple of decades before Jenner's development of the smallpox vaccine, smallpox was allegedly used as a weapon of war. Some sources claim that in 1776, a British commander in Quebec sent recently variolated civilians into the encampments of the Continental Army. Of the 10,000 Continental Army soldiers encamped in Quebec, half of them developed the illness, including Major General John Thomas, the task force commander of the Continental Army, who died. The Continental Army retreated south, a move that many historians claim allowed the northern British colonies to remain separate from the Americas and evolve into modern-day Canada. Shortly after this instance of early biological warfare, George Washington ordered that inoculation against smallpox be mandatory for any soldier who had not previously been infected. In 1796, Jenny used his cowpox vaccine to inoculate a 13-year-old boy against smallpox. It proved effective, so much so that countries around the world started encouraging vaccination. In 1803, the Royal Genarian Society had its first meeting. This is where the term vaccination originated, stemming from the Latin word vaca, or cow. Edward Jenner himself made an appearance and insisted that his friend and fellow doctor, Richard Dunning, be given credit for the term. By 1820, the London bills of mortality showed a drastic drop in deaths from smallpox compared to the decade before vaccination, from 18,447 deaths in 1791 to 1800 to 7,858. In 1853, the UK Board of Health made vaccinations mandatory in the first three months of an infant's life under penalty of fine or imprisonment. All of this vaccine frenzy started the ball rolling on a worldwide effort that resulted in smallpox's complete eradication in 1979. But this was just the beginning. From the late 1800s to the early 1900s, Louis Pasteur carried out research and experiments that led to the development of the cholera and anthrax vaccines. Between 1890 and 1950, the progress of bacteria and infections led to the development of the Bacillus calmet gurin, the BCG vaccine used to guard against tuberculosis. 1923 saw Alexander Glenny develop the tetanus vaccine, which soon after led to the creation of the diphtheria vaccine. 
The pertussis vaccine for whooping cough followed in 1948, but in the 1950s, Jonas Salk's development of the polio vaccine launched him to medical and scientific fame. Polio virus had been the fear of patients across the United States every summer. Now this disease that crippled and paralyzed thousands of people a year could finally be treated and prevented. Albert Sabin later made an oral version of the polio vaccine in 1962. In 1994, the Pan American Health Organization announced that polio had been eliminated in the Americas. Today, polio has been eliminated in all but a select few regions in the world. In 1971, the measles, mumps, rubella, MMR combined vaccine was licensed in the US. In 1974, the WHO included the diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis DTP combined vaccine in its list of vaccines recommended for their expanded program on immunization aimed at making many vaccines available to children around the world. Over the next several decades, vaccines against hepatitis A and B, chickenpox, rubella, and many other diseases were developed and licensed, aiding in the global fight for immunization. Modern outbreaks like Ebola were met with vaccines, helping to quickly contain them, making modern epidemics much smaller than many throughout history. But then, then there was COVID. With more deaths in America than US soldier casualties in World War II and a spread covering all demographics everywhere around the globe, COVID-19 has thrown the global health community for a loop. But vaccinations have again risen to the occasion. On average, the development of a vaccine takes 10 to 15 years, with the mumps vaccine previously taking the least amount of time with four years. However, when faced with this global health crisis, scientists developed the COVID vaccine in just under a year while still maintaining its effectiveness and safety. To understand vaccines, we have to understand ourselves. Imagine your body as a country. Just as countries have armed forces to protect against foreign invasion, so does our body in the form of an immune system. And just as invasion these days can come by many means – air, land, sea, cyberspace – so can the invasion of pathogens that cause disease. Countries have different branches of their armed services that specialize in defense and combat for each field of battle – Air Force, Army, Navy, Cybersecurity, and now in the US even a Space Force. Such is the case with our bodies. Each pathogen that invades our bodies has distinctive features to it that trigger a certain immune response. But just like any untrained combat force, if our bodies have never encountered a specific invasion before, it takes them time to learn the distinctive features of the attackers and develop defenses against them. If the world was attacked by an alien race with never-before-seen weaponry, it would take humans time to learn how their laser guns and plasma cannons worked and develop defenses against them. In our bodies, this is known as the period of illness. All the symptoms we're experiencing during illness, fever, sweating, discomfort, it's all our body learning and adjusting for a new pathogen. Imagine, though, that a defector alien arrives on Earth several years ahead of his invading race and gives all of the armed forces blueprints and details of their weapons and capabilities. Us humans would then be able to build laser guns and plasma cannons of our own, in addition to quantum shields and force fields. By the time the invading aliens arrived, we would be able to meet them prepared and defeat the threat with ease, and thus the world is saved. Such is the case with vaccines, though unfortunately there's no laser guns or force fields yet. Vaccines, when they're injected into your body, give your body the blueprint and details for a specific disease-causing pathogen, be it smallpox, polio, or hepatitis A, giving your body time to learn and build defenses. These details are delivered in different ways, giving rise to different types of vaccines. There are five major types of vaccines. Live attenuated vaccines, which contain a living version of the virus or bacteria that is weakened enough to not cause serious disease in people with healthy immune systems. Inactivated viruses, which contain inactive or dead samples of the virus or bacteria. Toxoid vaccines, which are similar to live attenuated viruses but fight specifically against bacteria that produce toxins in the body. Subunit vaccines, which contain only a small part of the virus or bacteria instead of a weakened or dead whole, and conjugate vaccines which focus on specifically fighting bacteria that is coated in a sugar-like layer called polysaccharides that make these pathogens hard for young children's immune systems to recognize and fight. So, our bodies use these weakened, dead, or incomplete pathogens to learn what they look like and how to best build a defense. So, when the real, full-size pathogen arrives, our body is prepared to mount a defense quickly. Recent developments in medical research have birthed a new generation – nucleic acid vaccines. These vaccines, which have gained popularity for their use against COVID-19, contain the DNA of a part of the pathogen which instructs our body's cells how to build a proper immune response. Building up defenses takes time 
time, just ask any doctor or military historian. So if a pathogen attacks before the vaccine has had its time to train your body's army, it is still possible for the person to fall ill. However, your body stores the information the vaccine gives you in memory cells so it can respond to infections even if the invasion happens weeks, months, or years after inoculation. Because after all, knowledge is power. Believe it or not, Chinese emperors blowing smallpox powder up their children's noses, Buddhist monks drinking some snake venom, and American colonists rubbing smallpox pustules on open wounds started a medical phenomenon that has saved countless lives and rid the world of many diseases, though after a period of refinement. Diseases that were once commonplace and considered a death sentence throughout a great majority of human history are now looked at as ancient oddities. Polio, rubella, measles, mumps, and smallpox, among many others, are now rendered just a non-worry for life by just a couple of small jabs. Childhood vaccination programs have drastically curbed the infant mortality rate. The danger of the flu, once a feared killer, has been greatly reduced by yearly vaccinations. But the impact of vaccines extends beyond the personal well-being of the injected person. There are people in society who cannot receive vaccines, whether due to allergies, age, immune problems, or other factors. These people can still be protected by vaccinations, though. If enough of the people that interact with them on a daily basis are vaccinated, it makes the transmission of diseases much more difficult, thus preventing these vulnerable portions of the population from being infected. When enough of the population is vaccinated to allow for this to happen, herd immunity is achieved. Perhaps no other time in recent history has shown the importance and impact of vaccines as, as this period of COVID-19. Herd immunity and the end of a lengthy worldwide lockdown rides on enough people getting the needle stuck in their arm. Only then can we finally stop hiding inside, binge-watching YouTube videos, or on second thought, maybe I'd like that lockdown to continue for a bit longer. Not really. Get your vaccine. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. If you're, uh, you know, there's lots of conspiracy people on the internet. <laughs> That's what the dislike button's for. As always, thank you for watching.